Uganda Tourism Board. What strategies have Uganda put in place to attract UK investors to tourism? Thank you very much. Uh, the starting point is really to get Uganda known by the global community. So awareness creation is our strategy number one. And we, have, we do this in different ways. We use different means. Um, right now, the digital world is the biggest tool of reaching out to create awareness. We work with the international media houses, the digital platforms like Expedia, Booking.com, and the others to get the world to know about Uganda. If they don't know the brand Uganda, they can't be able to invest in Uganda. But we also work together with our sister institution, Uganda Investment Authority, where all the profiles of the uh, investments for tourism are listed. So we do have uh, on the Uganda Tourism Board website, on Uganda Investment Authority website, the listing of the various investment in tourism from accommodation. The one thing that we need with accom investment in accommodation in Uganda with the hotels is basically luxury hotels. That is the segment that is missing. We do have from budget hotel to high end, but the missing link is the luxury accommodation. We are also trying to uh, bring in the international brands. We already have the Hiltons, the Marriott's. Um, we need a core in Uganda. We need the Radisons in Uganda. So that is another specific segment that we are looking for. And this is we provide on the digital uh, platform, but also in forums as this. Um, other ways is also we do attend different international expos and conferences like this. Uh, I was very glad this morning that I already met somebody and I have a further follow-up meeting on, um, on Tuesday morning to actually discuss investment in golf resort in Kasese in Uganda. So uh, a, a, a platform like this is a great one and I'm very glad that I was able to come here because I could as well have gone home uh, at 11 o'clock this morning because already I got uh, a potential with an investor who is coming to invest in golf resort in Kasese. I do believe that uh, there might be opportunities still to meet some others, uh, potential investors in this room. So that is one of the other ways that we do uh, reach out to try and promote investment in tourism in Uganda. But we also use our missions abroad. The High Commission here in London, they have all the prospectors as well and all the missions uh, abroad across the globe is another means by which we promote investment in tourism in Uganda. Okay, considering the fact that we're in the United Kingdom, how do you ensure that the tourism sector aligns with the UK business interest? Because, because there might be a couple of other nations that are interested in certain sectors, how do you ensure that the tourism sector aligns with the UK business interest? Um, I, th I believe that our big biggest connector is our High Commission in London, who play the um, economic and commercial diplomacy. So we do, f they feed us with the priorities of the UK um, government and economy for us to be able to align appropriately. Just like I said, you know, earlier this morning, you know, sports tourism has become big and golf tourism in the UK is what they are looking for. There are over 40 million golf player in Europe and the UK has a big number of those and uh, so we are trying to align ourselves, and some of this information comes through the media, but also our High Commission. I would like to address myself to the product offerings. 
which we prefer not to say products, but experiences that we offer to tourists. For a very long time, we developed our wildlife nature-based experiences very well. It's what Uganda has been uh, best known for. Uh, and rightly so, we have over 50% of the remaining wa uh, population of the mountain gorillas in the world, over 50%. Uganda has 50% uh, of the bird species in Africa. Yeah? We have the source of the longest river in the world, River Nile, the source is in Uganda. Renzori Mountain, the highest peak is the third uh, highest in Africa, and it's right at the equator and uh, with permanent snow on it. I could go on and on, and uh, the diversity of wildlife that we have. We have 10 national parks, 12 wildlife reserves. So that has been our focus for the longest time, but that is changing. In the last few years, we have realized that uh, our our assets in tourism development is not limited to the nature, but the people, and this is from the feedback that we are getting from the travelers to Uganda as well. And we have realized that um, the people of Uganda, the Ugandans, are the biggest asset that we have. And that has now drawn us to development of uh, our culture as uh, one of the biggest experiences you know that we have to offer to the travelers to Uganda the uh, the kingdoms we are working very closely with the kingdoms Bunyoro kingdom we we normally organize different tourism experiences around the celebration of the coronations of the kings of Buganda, Bunyoro, Toro, and, and the others. But also we are promoting and developing, you know, um, gastronomy tourism. It is part of the culture. We have over 50 different tribes in Uganda. The delicacies are so varied. So it's part of the culture of the people as well. The history of the different tribes of Uganda. So we have, we have, um, we have realized that that is one of the biggest assets besides all the others that we still have to develop. Now, one thing is, as we all know, uh, Sir Winston Churchill this was the first to describe Uganda as the pearl of Africa. Yeah. So the, the, the depth, the range, and the variety of the continent is in Uganda. But like we have everything for everyone in the world. But we can't, the mistake has been to push everything at once. But our new national marketing strategy is directing us to prioritize um, key experiences that we need to push and then eventually be able to start rolling the others one by one. Otherwise, then people think, maybe we are not serious, you know, to try and offer everything at the same time. So that's the new strategy that we have. So culture is at the center of it, and we are pushing the development of uh, cultural experiences in a big way. We also know with the trend of travelers around the world these days, people want real experience. They want to be involved in what is going on. If they're coming to experience the culture, they want to experience from the farm to the table. They want to be part of it. They want to pick the coffee beans, berries. They want to, you know, be part of grinding the coffee and making it and then drinking it. Yeah? They want to learn how to cook. You know, they want to pick up uh, recipes from Uganda and be able to come, go back home and try it out. So Thank you very much. That's, uh, that's one of it. But also, you know, one key point uh, point she brings us is about pricing. Yeah, I think we have a pricing structure which is very clear, you know, that we have pricing for Ugandans. Actually, it's not Uganda, but it's East African. Uh, 
somebody, a tourist or a traveler from uh, Tanzania, Rwanda, any of the East African states will get to Uganda and pay the same rate as a Ugandan. And then we have foreign residents and then the rest. So there's a price structure that uh, tries to address the point of uh, the pricing. Thank you very much, Lily Ajarova. You've spoken really like the chief executive of the Uganda Tourism Board. Thank you very much and a round of applause to her.